From the way you describe how you pre-visualize the image, design the image, and try to realize those shots, and sometimes spend a lot of time, a lot of uh, uh, multiple troubles, a lot of time, and you still may not get it. But uh, I, I can imagine the satisfaction when you get the image. So, what do you think is the ultimate goal for a photographer? Not for the photographer like you, just for all the photographers you wish. What is the ultimate goal for photography? Okay, it's a very good question. Like, uh, uh, I mean, I would say the ultimate goal is having a frame you know like which doesn't need a watermark or doesn't need the photographer's name in it. i mean starting from i mean let's say uh, the afghan girl picture i mean there is a picture from you also cheetah hanging upside upside oh, yeah. down cheetah, you know like <laughs> yeah so. that image define me but I think that it's easy, and, and, and I don't feel very, how to say, but, but everybody remember me by this image. Yeah, so those are, you know, the goal of a photographer. So, I mean, and since I travel to many places, I want my, if you ask me actually, what is your goal? Like, I mean, my goal is actually like to make one picture which stands out from that place. So not actually many, just one picture which stands out from that park or from that country or actually like that zone. So your orangutan shot, the word upside down, with this image simply is already become iconic. Those are, you know, like I can say the pinnacle of any of the pictures. What is your plan for the next five years or the near future? Uh, I have currently three projects running. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm always a big fan of uh, cats. I'm actually doing uh, I mean, a project which is too early to relieve, but uh, it's completely about um, mostly endangered cats. And uh, so far, uh, I've been successful uh, in terms of uh, the time, the frames, everything. So. I'm coming out with a couple of books in the coming year and uh, also a, a short movie. So that's going on. You know, I think uh, the last one year was a little bit of a slow just uh, because of the travel restriction. Yes. So maybe 2024, I should be releasing uh, the project which I'm doing. Well, I cannot, uh, I cannot wait to see it, man. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So, so far, the great about that successful with uh, the frames that uh, I was expecting. Out. I'm a person who doesn't want to compromise on uh, the quality and the frames. But, and so, when when you do that, actually, the chances becomes very very slim. You know, like so. Like, so, so far, I'm happy with what I, I have got. So, I need you, actually more frames. And, I think you are. Among all the, uh, I mean, I, I, I've been in Africa for the past seven, eight years, I've, uh, for a long time. I've met lots of photographers. You, my friend, you are the most determined photographer I ever encountered in my life. You are very, so determined to get a good image, and you can go back there year after year, trip after trip, and you give the most patience to wait, and you never give up. This is very admirable, my friend. You know, like, uh, that's what I wanted to even actually suggest to the fellow pho uh, photographers too, you know, like, uh, instead of going for quantity, go with the quality. Like, one frame will be good enough, you know, like, so, I mean, so that actually needs patience, dedication, and, uh, you know, like, you have to visualize it. So instead of going for 100 frames, just like, a, I mean, maybe the good frames, I mean, all the 100 frames will be good, but one outstanding frame will be much better than that. Let me uh, share with you a small incident. Uh, it happened to me in uh, Seward, Alaska. 
I was there for the humpback whale bridge, and I selected a frame where you know, in between the two mountains there is a small island, and I want a uh, humpback whale bridge in between that. So it is actually like I mean quite hard for like so. So we, uh, I and my brother, we stayed there for four days. You know, like so. I thought actually within the when they said actually there are so many humpback whale breaching there. You know, and so we will definitely get within two days. So I booked for four days. So and uh, all the four days, the breach happened, but not where I wanted. So I was actually completely disappointed, and when uh, I was. Mean, uh, I cannot actually come back without actually the frame there. So, and uh, I think uh, you know Rajan, uh, my brother, who's uh, who's a doctor, and so he he manages the ICU there. So he cannot like action this way. So I said no, I, I cannot stay back. I mean, I had to go back. You know, like I don't know what the air, airline ticket or actually like I don't want to mess up with my travel. So, and uh, and for him also, it's very important to be back to his work. Uh, So I told him I'm going to stay back. So uh, he asked me where. I said actually like on the street, you know. Like so, I mean, uh, and uh, I just looked up, and there was actually like an information counter there, and uh, they had a toilet. So I thought, okay, like I'd be like night, I'd just go and uh, sit there, or actually lie down there. Yes. You know, like, so, yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, uh, use a toilet. And that place is actually not all that uh, risky. Like there are only some uh, tourists there. Right? I mean, I mean there is no much crime. So I thought, okay, let me just, uh, I mean, uh, use the information uh, and just sleep there. You know, and uh, Rajan said, be careful with the equipment. You know, like I don't want you to be uh, like, I mean, uh, I mean, you to get into any trouble or something. And uh, the same evening, uh, uh, somebody just passed by, and he was a uh, helicopter pilot. So he asked me, like, I mean, what are you doing here? I said, actually, I didn't find an accommodation. So we just had a chat, and they said, actually, like, I think uh, I know a uh, B uh, Airbnb where they can help. So he called a uh, call up there, and we got a room. So the very next day, I just go go out there. And I get the frame what I wanted. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like so it paid is, off. You know, good for you. Yeah, it paid. Off. Yeah, yeah. So that is uh, that picture there. Uh, the park is using as the I main iconic picture for that. And so it the got selected. Uh, I know. If you go yeah, to that yeah, park, yeah. you buy the brochure. Your picture is there. Yeah. I think among all your images, that's one image. Often appears to be one of your most popular one. It's a swinging. Let's swing. The one who wins the uh, wildlife hug of the year. Talk about that image, because to me, to me, I often find, for me, some action shot like cheetah hunting. That's not a problem. But what I really lack of is really some very good humorous image. And that image defines the humor in wildlife photography. Is how you can come across to that image? You are able to shoot. Okay, so that's actually a very interesting uh, frame, and uh, I can actually add a little bit more also to like if somebody asks me actually like what is the most difficult. Subject or you know like I main task and shooting, I can say you know like uh, the most common, the most commonly seen subject is the most difficult one to be photographed. Right, so in combination with that, actually, like, but if you see something, you know, like uh, interaction, don't ignore it. The story behind this is, you know, this particular frame is. Uh, this was taken in South India, where uh, 
I mean, it's been uh, run by the government and uh, we don't have any uh, option of having a private tour or something like that. It is, they, they select actually six passengers or eight passengers per Jeep. They put on uh, like eight photographers in a Jeep and they just send you out. You, know, you are just actually part of it. You know, like even though if you are traveling there alone, you have to be part of the eight photographers or there was an alarm call, you know, like, uh, and you, well, most of the time the alarm call is for the tiger or the leopard. So everyone is actually so focused, you know, like I wanted to, you just wanted to go and see the tiger. You know, right? so, and I saw this, it's uh, the monkey family, it's the gray leopard family, just playing there. And, uh, and this was actually running up. I mean, initially I saw it actually hanging on one of the tail. So I told the driver, stop, you know, like I just wanted to, you know, like take a picture. And uh, all the other photographers in the Jeep, they were actually not comfortable with me. you know. <laughs> and again, actually, like the, the baby actually climbed up again. It was hanging and actually like both of the tail and swinging, you know, like this is the moment of life, you know, like. Believe it or not, the other photographers were, and I don't want to put the put on anybody, you know, like when uh, they're saying, okay, this is the most common thing, you know, like why is I mean, <laughs> so going so crazy? <laughs> why, why are you going crazy about it? You know, like, I mean, this is the moment of my life, you know, like I should be taking picture, you know, like uh, nobody else even tried to take a picture. They it's completely actually filled with photographers. Nobody wanted a picture, you know, like, or, and like, uh, I mean, for that picture, you know, like, I mean, selecting a most common subject and seeing a life is something, you know, like, uh, if we can actually put a, if your picture can put a smile in somebody's face, you got it. You know, like when you see a picture, you know, like somebody, wow, you just, you got it, you know, like, so, that's the story behind that picture. Actually, it is an extraordinary um, talent and, and ability for a photographer can recognize uh, creative work from most common thing and most common animals. That is extraordinary. Okay, let's talk about this. Hannah. Uh, eight, ten years ago, we were shooting in Ontario for the birds, and Hannah was there, and she can barely holding up a camera with uh, what that was 100, 400, or 300 F2A lens shooting, but she was very much uh, get into this uh, uh, in a very early age. Now, my goodness, and Hannah just went. Everybody see here, see this uh, 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 bear shot. The wildlife photographer of the highly command and is done by, uh, how old was Hannah when she shot this? Oh, she is uh, 16. 16 years old. She is 16, 16 year old yeah. girl. She already become award winning young photographer now. How do you feel she pick up the interest after her father? a big satisfaction just because I mean you feel that you are passing on something to your, your children you know yes. and they are they are actually like liking what you are also doing so and uh, I mean my kids so uh, almost uh, I mean right from age uh, uh, two or actually like even actually when they were smaller I used to take them to all the jungle and I always actually like I mean uh, show, show them actually like what is the jungle life it's a combination you know like uh, I mean of you know like I mean most of us live in the city so it is better to show what is on the other side of it so it is just not just for me I, I not only shown the jungle I've taken them to all the you know, uh, uh, developing country or an underdeveloped countries and I show them the life. So they are not, you know, like they are aware of what is happening around the world. So, and uh, uh, I'm so glad actually they love photography. They hang out with me and I get actually good uh, 
time to spend with them and like especially when parents are out in the field you know like you'll be missing your family so I mean and when you uh, when you know that actually the family is with you you know like you'll be actually like more energized so and uh, to some extent uh, and they are uh, I mean having a creative frame uh, frame and I need not tell them also what to be done you know, and they are also dedicated you know like not all the jungles are uh, comfortable so sometimes we just have to lay on the floor with the sleeping uh, bag and stuff like that use the, the public toilet and uh, they are very much comfortable with that and uh, i really uh, thank for their uh, acceptance you know, like for taking up this task so let the children to be emerge into very early age with the love of nature love uh, the understanding of the world and also the um the the influence of the artistic uh, uh directions simply is the most precious gift you can actually give to them so very well done and yeah. and thank you thomas um my friend Uh, I will be here um, through the year, so maybe we can see you again uh, when, when, when. Yeah, when definitely here. love to. Yeah, yes. and uh, definitely I love to travel with you. And uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, honestly speaking, you know, like uh, I love your picture. Thank you. And uh, uh, I mean, so I have uh, I mean the uh, high regards to your. Uh, work and uh, always actually look for, forward for your work and i could not say no when you asked me actually like we wanted to do an interview you know next year i may have uh, two three months sabbatical i just do the uh, uh, research and the uh, on the cat's behavior if you are free just come to join me just two of us we hang around you know we shoot every day we can talk about the photography talk about the life and uh, okay, okay. doing lots of catch up okay. and for today yeah. thank you very much for take our interview thank you so much i'm jeffrey wu and this is a conversation with a master thanks again thomas thank you see you next time thank you thank you thank you take care